Aloha, I am John Roth, and this is Just Ask John, where I, an estate planning attorney, answer your estate planning questions. Today, we have Katherine Werner Brooks, the Executive Director of the North Hawaii Hospice, here to share with us a little bit about hospice. As an estate planning attorney, I constantly help my clients put together proactive plans to make sure their wishes are carried out in the event of their incapacity or death. That's usually a power of attorney, healthcare directive, a will, sometimes a trust. Uh, it's not an easy conversation to have because you're talking about potential incapacity or death that's similar to hospice. People don't like to think about hospice. And so it's easy to put off just like an estate plan and not discuss. Uh, so hopefully today you'll learn something from this conversation. Let's just start with the basics. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you, Don. Uh, so what is hospice? Well, actually, hospice is a philosophy of care. A lot of people think hospice is a place, but we say that it's a philosophy of care. And the philosophy is that we want people to be empowered, we want them to be in charge, and we want them to have their wishes honored. And I think doing the planning is something that we encourage because a lot of people come to the point of entering hospice and they haven't done their estate plan. Right, I, I have clients who have been hospice patients and it does make the conversation regarding estate planning a lot more difficult when there is an emergency or your health isn't good, uh, especially because in a estate plan you need to be making sound decisions mm -hmm. that affect not only yourself but your other family members in the community. Who qualifies for hospice care? A service. Well, we say the word terminally ill, and that sounds really scary, but the truth is, is all of us are actually terminal. We, we are all going to meet our death, and so when people have a serious illness and they're starting to decline, there is a medical way that we can evaluate whether you are on a decline. So it's really watching for more difficulty functioning, more decline in functional status, having trips to the doctor, a lot of trips, a lot of ER visits. That's when somebody should call us and see if it's ready for us to come in and offer support. Right. As an estate planning attorney, I also talk about the D word, death, often. And it's when you're talking about it, a lot of times people say, if I die, then I want, it's like, it's when, mm -hmm. not if. Okay. So, Catherine, if family identifies that their parent, their dad or mom, uh, needs more care, at what point do they contact hospice and what happens from the point where they call hospice to the point where they're receiving the care? We usually ask if, we, if it's okay for us to gather some medical records and medical history so we can look at that. And then if we determine that the person is likely eligible for service, we meet with the family and we find out what kinds of things are starting to become difficult. What I like to say is that most of the time when someone's seriously ill, they're going out a lot to the doctor's office, to labs, they're going to get equipment, and suddenly all of that is being taken care of by hospice. So we're bringing all these services to the home instead of people having to get somebody out in the car and wait in waiting rooms so that they can enjoy life and do the things that they wanna do. We have volunteers and there's no other medical service that has the full array because we're looking at spiritual health, we're looking at psychological health, we're looking at the family system and what kind of errands need to be done or anything that the volunteers can help at home. So that's something you don't get with other healthcare services is volunteers. The family is also our patient. We, we see the whole family and so we're supporting everyone. And we love it when we get somebody early enough that we can help them with a lot of things that they want to do. We recently had a man who wanted to ride a white horse and so we went out and we found a lady who had a white horse and he got to ride the horse. <laughs> it was really neat. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's really about the, the moments of life you mm -hmm. know, that are important. A lot of times it's mostly just wrapping things up, saying what you want to say to different friends, different family members, spending time reviewing your life. So those are the positive things that can happen in hospice if you get there early enough that it isn't just the last three days of your life. Right. Yeah. Well, Catherine, you've talked about a lot of great services that hospice provides in addition to what healthcare the hospice patient might already be receiving. What does this cost the family? 
Well, believe it or not, in the United States, it usually doesn't cost the family anything. There's no out-of-pocket costs at all. And that's, that's because it's a combination of the fundraising and nonprofit status, which most hospices have. Since I'm on the board, I know about the fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, most healthcare insurances have a benefit for hospice too. So if someone has insurance, we will bill the insurance to see what benefit they have. But the majority of the costs are really because we're a nonprofit. We have never asked the family or the patient for funds in 34 years. Wow, so, that's awesome. Yeah. So be proactive, do your state planning, don't be afraid to contact hospice if you think that they could offer you additional support during the end of life care. Thank you, Catherine, for joining us. If you have any questions, please comment below or visit our website, hawaiitrustlaw.com. I am John Roth, this is Catherine Warner-Brooks, and this is Just Ask John. Thank you, aloha. <laughs>